Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you how you can create this train here. So let's go. First of all this is version 2 of my Unreal Engine train tutorials. If you want to watch the original one, link is in the description. So we start up with the static mesh that just is a train here. Also link is in the description. And a train sound. Like this. The first thing that we need is the track itself, so right click, blueprint class actor, and let's call this path. Open this up, and the path just gets a spline component, so a spline. Then we go to the construction script. We need one variable here that called mesh size, and this will be a float. In my case, the mesh size, so the track itself, is a size of 1000 Unreal units. You can play around, you can see what fits better later. First of all, we take out the spline and get the spline length. Then we take out the mesh size here. We say divide it by the mesh size. Then we need the for loop, this one here and connect the return value to the last index, it will automatically truncate. Then we take out again the spline component and the mesh size. From the loop body we say add spline mesh component. From the return value we say set start and end. And now we need to set the start position, the start tangent, end position and end tangent. For this we go from the spline and say get location at distance along spline. As well we get the tangent at distance along spline. And we just copy and paste this down here. Then we say index, pull it out and say multiply and connect the mesh size. This will be the distance. Then we go again from the return value here and say add the mesh size and this will be the distance down here. Of course connect the spline again like that. At a tangent we say claim vector size and put the mesh size into the max as well down here for the other tangent like that. And now we just connect it. So this is the start position, this is the start tangent, this is the end position and the end tangent. Like that. Again we go from the return value and say set collision enabled and put this just to collision enabled. One last time from the return value we say set static mesh. We pull this out and say promote to variable and just call this mesh. Because here we can put our mesh that we want. In our case the train track. So let's open up the train track. In my case I have this rails. Of course link is in the description. We select the rails here, put it right here. If we go to the viewport you can see that we need to fix something. We go back to the construction script and pull this out a little bit. We say minus, in this case subtract, and put this to minus one. When we now compile it and go to the viewport, open up the details and pull out the spline point here to 1000 in my case. You can see we have an perfect lineup here. If you put this to 2000, we have two meshes. Great. The next step is we need to adjust the spline itself so that it fits the position of the train. So add static mesh, go to the details, select our train here, put it right here, and now we just position the train. If the train has the position that you want, we just copy the location to the spline here, 
like that. And then we can just delete the static mesh again, like that. Compile and save this. And when we now put the path inside the world, as you can see, we have already a spline component that's rotated. And when we pull out the spline point here, as you can see, it automatically generates the spline here. Let's hold the Alt key so we can create a new spline point to make this curve here like that. Great. Now we need the train that follows the spline here. For that, we say right click, blueprint class, pawn in this case, and let's call this train underscore blueprint. Open this up. Inside here, we need three components. The first one will be an static mesh. Of course, we select our train in this case, put it right here, and just leave the position, very important. The next part is an audio, this one here. This will be our sound for the train later. And the most important thing in the new version of the train is the floating pawn movement. So we have a real movement of the train. The next part is we need some variables, the active path. This will be in path object reference, like this one. Then an stop variable with a boolean. And the last one will be the speed as an float. Of course, we select the sound here. So go here and put the sound right here. In my case, the volume multiplier is four. And if you want, you can overwrite the distance. So let's put this to, let's say 2000 and 2500. Next, we go to the event graph. We can delete everything except for the tick event. Now we need a new function called get path. For those who are familiar with my IR card tutorials, this is the exact same function. So we pull out the active path and check if it's valid with a question mark like this. Then we get the location at spline point. Put this to world. From the spline, we say get number of spline points and connect it to the point index here. Down here, we get the actor location. From the spline, we want to say find tangent closest to world location. Of course, to put this to world here, this will be the world location. Then we want to normalize this value. Then we say multiply, right click, convert to float, put this to 50. This is the tolerance. Then we say add and put the get actor location to this one here. Again, we go from the spline back to here and say find location, closest to world location, put this to world again, this will be the location. And at the end, we go again from the get actor location back to here and say find look at rotation. And this will be the target. Pull this up here and we want to set the actor rotation. Up here, where we get the location at spline point, we say equal and put the get actor location inside here. This is 50 again as the tolerance. From the is valid, we need a branch like that. On false, we want to set the actor rotation. On true, we want to set the stop boolean to true. So what we do here, we check first of all, is our active path valid? If it is, then we check the location at the last spline point. So if the train is at the end of the spline, he will just on true 
stop. If not, he will calculate the rotation, so the steering you can say of the train with the function here with the tolerance of 50 and set the actor rotation. Let's go back to our event graph because we need to call the function. So we pull out the stop boolean here as well as the audio. We need a branch to ask on true. We want to set the volume multiplier to zero. Copy and paste this down here. And I set it to, in my case, four. Connect the target. And now we want to add movement input. So this is how the train is moving later. For this, we get the actor forward vector as a world direction. And then we pull out the speed and connect it with the scale value. When we open up the details, let's set the speed, for example, to 0 0.5. You can play around with this value here. And at the end, we just call the get path function. Great, let's see if this works. Compile and save this. Then we just place the train inside the world like that. Then we open up the details and select the active path, our path that we created. Where we now hit play, the train follows the track. You can hear the volume. Of course, you can adjust the position of the train at the track anytime in the path blueprint. And when it reaches the final spline point, the train stops and the volume stops as well. Great! So, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know. And yeah, goodbye!